Of all the mending PCs I've been looking at recently, this one might be the most exciting. And that's because I think it's the one that pretty much everybody can use, especially if you're someone who runs a lot of stuff at home and you want to take control of all your data, run some home servers. Well, right here is the Minis Forum MS01, and this is a tiny little server. Let me just cut to the chase and tell you what's so interesting about this. Right there on the back at the top, those are two 10 gigabit ports and those are the Intel X710 SFP Plus ports right there. And then beside that we have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports and those are also Intel i266. So there you already have a bunch of stuff. But then we have USB 4 right there. Each one of those can do 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt as well, but you can run them as 20 gigabit per second Ethernet. So we have a lot of Ethernet options right here. You're going to get a lot of storage. Now you notice the size. You're not going to be putting tons and tons of hard drives in here. So I would maybe say maybe not a file server, maybe not an S, but you can do so much more with it. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS. 25 hit apply and that price comes down to 1719 now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for microsoft you'd have to buy this many 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 times to equal the price of one regular key from microsoft as of right now this windows 10 pro key will unlock windows 11. we also have windows 10 home windows 11 you can buy it directly windows 11 home and we have two flavors of office once you're finished all you have to do is click on your user account up here go to your user center click on my purchase orders just view keys and codes and you can just copy and paste your key hit start type activate click on activation settings paste it in there click on next and you will be activated so head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an oem windows key at a price that makes sense I was kind of intimidated when i first got this because i was like there's so much to cover and so many different angles and so many things to talk about i don't know how to cover all of this so what i'm going to do right now is tell you the specs of what we have here i'm going to do some benchmarks with the included windows 11 home that came on this which i think is maybe just throw it on there for a joke because no one's going to run that. You're going to install Linux or Proxmox or something. I'm going to run the benchmarks in that. Then I'm going to tell you and show you what I'm doing with this. So let's have a little bit of fun right now. Go ahead in the comments and tell me what you would do with something like this. And note that there are three M.2 slots on the inside. So you do have some storage options and a PCI Express that we're going to talk about as well. So you can install expansion cards. And then at the end of the video, you can either reply to your comment or edit it and say, OK, now that I've heard all of the stuff that I've done and all the stuff you can do and all the stuff that goes on under the hood, here's what I would do now. I'm just curious to know how different things are when someone watches the whole video versus a little bit. Don't expect everybody to do that, but it'll be a spot of fun, won't it? All right, first off, let's talk about what's on the inside here. And we've got the Intel i9-13900H. This will show up as 20 threads. We've got six performance cores. Now, the performance cores are hyper-threaded. So that's 12 threads. And then we have eight efficiency cores. One thing that's interesting about these efficiency cores, I didn't realize that they are actually about as fast as a generation or two ago's regular cores. So they're not super slow cores or anything. They just run at a lower frequency and they're not hyper-threaded. So they're going to show up as one thread when you're doing all your work. The maximum speed on those performance cores is 5.4 gigahertz. But get this, it doesn't do that for the entire time because this is not designed to dissipate that kind of heat or run like that all the time. So it's designed for short bursts. It'll run like that for, I believe, Leave it's 30 seconds take your system up to 125 watts but then it'll throttle it back down to 45 watts throttling the cpu to around 3 point something 3.4 like when you're doing stuff with servers that's kind of important you need like that little bit of burst and you're usually not going to be running it at 100 percent for more than a few seconds here and there so that's completely fine with me that means you're going to get efficiency number one with those efficiency cores but yeah you're going to get an efficient machine but it's also not going to be pulling too much power and generating too much heat let's go through the ports here on the front we have two usb 2.0. That's going to be handy for your mouse, keyboard, and whatever else. Then we have USB 3 right there. Then we have our headphone microphone combo port. Flipping it around at the back, we have uh, two more of the USB 3, 3.2, that is Gen 3.2, HDMI. We've got those two USB 4 that I mentioned before. Then we've got our 2 gigabit LAN and the two uh, SFP Plus ports for 10 gigabit Ethernet. You're going to need to, of course, get a special plug for that. But now the USB ports on the back, you can do a lot with them since it works with Thunderbolt. You could plug it up to an external box with a whole bunch of hard drives in it or whatever. But I think if I wanted to do something like that, I might run SAS with a, an expansion card and, you know, LSI expansion card. Throw it in there. Look at that. 
So on this side, you can see we have some cooling above the core components right there. And then right there, that is a full size 16 speed slot, but it only runs at 8x, but it's 8x fifth gen. So you're going to get plenty of speed. Not going to have to worry about that. Eight lanes of PCI Express Gen 5 is going to be just fine. Now this is isolated. So that's it. It's not sharing resources with anything else. You can plug, I don't know, a number of different things in there. I'm going to kind of guess that most people are not going to use this for a couple different reasons. I mean, unless you're running some external expansion, but you know, and, and we do have the Intel V Pro, which will allow us to share some resources and actually do hardware pass through and all that kind of stuff, which is beyond the scope of this video. I think that a lot of people are going to leave this empty. I'm not about exactly sure what I would do with it. And here's one of the reasons if you were to, you know, want to get some more M.2 or whatever, well, you can't use the bifurcated M.2. It doesn't work with this PCI Express Gen 5 slot. So you're not going to be able to get, unless you have one of the PCI uh, e-cards that does have an integrated switch, but I'm not sure. So otherwise, there are other options that you can use. I mean, you can install some decent graphics cards in this, but also the other thing to think about is this is thin. If this were a little bit thicker, then maybe we could install a double height card or something, but it's not going to let us do that. So single slot. Then on the back, we have cooling over our M.2. Three of those. Get this, you can use U.2 or M.2 in that first slot. So let's break this down while we're looking at the back. So over here, the first one is going to be PCI Express Gen 4. Give you the most speed. Now you can install an U.2 or an M.2 in there. There's a switch up here that has to be in the right spot or else it can damage your M.2. So if you're using U.2, put it the switch in U.2. M.2, you can put it there for that. And the maximum transfer speed on the PCI Express 4.0 is 7,000 megabytes a second. Yes. It also supports RAID 0 and RAID 1 and all that stuff. If you want that, you can get the support right here. Moving on over to the next slot. That's PCI Express Gen 3 by 4 and that'll give you 3,500 megabytes a second of read. The final slot is PCI Express Gen 3 by 1 and that will give you about a thousand megabytes of read and write. So you can set up your drives accordingly. If you're installing Proxmox, I would maybe install it on the slower drive and then install your VMs on the faster drive. I think that's what I might do. I might end up switching my drives around. I accidentally installed Proxmox on the first one. So yeah, I might swap those around. Just get the most speed where the, the VMs are installed. On the back here, I want to note that these are all given their own PCI Express lanes as well. So they've got this thing sectioned off so that you can just kind of run everything at full speed without anything bothering anything else. The USB 4 is going to support displays as well. So if you wanted to run three displays, a couple of them being 8K and then having HDMI as well, you could run three displays with this and just run it as a desktop. And you could if you wanted to. It'd be a crazy little mini PC. We do have Wi-Fi 6 installed on this. I also want to mention that the uh, M.2 NVMe slots, they're 22.110, so a nice long NVMe. If you want to get some of those big ones, you can do that. Also, the memory on this, it comes with 32 gigabytes of crucial memory. It's a DDR5 and a 5200 mega transfer rate. You can add up to 64 gigabytes. I'll put a link for that in the description if you want to. Now, the version I have right here came with two 16 gigabyte sticks, 32 gigabytes of the crucial memory. It also came with uh, one terabyte NVMe M.2. I would recommend getting it this way because I actually sat down and did the math. You can get the bare bone um, and it comes with just the unit, no hard drive, no OS installed, which is fine, and uh, no RAM. But I did the math and I went out and bought the exact same RAM and, you know, like the exact same M.2 and it ended up being more expensive. So this is one of those rare occasions where it's not like Apple, where it's like, oh, would you like to add 16 gigabytes of RAM? That'll be $600. It's not like configuring an Apple computer or some nonsense like that. So they've actually done a pretty good job of keeping the prices low on the components that they have installed. So I would recommend probably if you're just going to use 32 gigabytes of RAM, grabbing the version like this, and then you can just ignore Windows wipe the drive and install whatever else because that comes with Windows 11 Home. <laughs> it's just so totally goofy for a system like this. Speaking of Windows 11 Home, let's pop in there and benchmark it so you can compare it against all the other mini PCs that I've looked at with that same operating system. All right, so in Cinebench, our multi-core score is 12252, and that's with the 14 cores and the 20 threads. Remember, some of those are efficiency cores. Now, to compare and contrast that, AMD Ryzen 9 that we're seeing in a lot of these mini PCs, 7940HS. Also, the Ryzen 7 7840HS is going to have very similar performance, but you can see that one's a little bit faster, even though it's only got 8 cores, 16 threads. These are all the full... Uh, the full speed cores. When we get into actual virtualization, the number of cores is probably going to be a big deal. So I do like this and you're not going to need extreme, you know, processing like this on all of your cores if you're doing a lot of virtual machines, especially if they're headless and don't have graphical user interface. But, but who knows, it's still nice to see that this is an extremely fast part. Let's go ahead and do a single core score just to see what we get. Look at that single core performance. You know, the regular cores on this are really fast. So you can see how it stacks up right there. Let's also check out Geekbench. Here's our single core score, 2377, and our multi-core score, 
12874. Then I'll scroll down and we can take a look at the individual tests here. You can check the test that makes the most sense for you for whatever you're doing with your computer, and then you'll know. Also did an OpenCL test, 16762. Scroll down here and you can take a look at all the individual scores there. All right, I really think it's time we get Windows off of this machine and start using it the way it's intended to be used. So as soon as I installed Linux, I put Proxmox on here, I installed Windows 10, and we're gonna do some tests here. So this is running on the first drive. This is the drive that is included. It's in the PCI Express Gen 4x4, uh, and this one is the one that came with the unit. And as you can see there, we've got some pretty good read and write IOPS. These are the IOPS all throughout. The randoms look great too. And let's go over here and look at this. Yep, that's great. This is going to feel so snappy when you're running VMs on this. Now, I don't generally like to run Proxmox and my VMs on the same physical hard drive. I like doing that on a separate hard drive. So I'm going to install a Predator NVMe. It's faster than the Gen 3x4 slot, but I'm going to install that in the second slot. Then we're going to clone this over there and test it out. See how fast that is. Now, I would prefer to run that drive in the first slot so it'll take advantage of the extra speed and then I'd like to run Proxmox on the second or third M.2 NVMe slot because I don't care if it's as fast as the, the drive that has all the VMs on it, but I can't do that unless I remove the heatsink on the drive that they've included because it bumps into the fan housing whenever you move it out of the first slot. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do here. I have to think about this for a little bit. I might install a third M.2 into the third slot and then move Proxmox over to that. But these are all just things to think about when you're putting together your system. I like to have my VMs on the fastest drive and that would be the first one. It just feels snappier. And I also think it's good to have a separate physical drive. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Ooh, it's good to have a separate drive. No, 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 no. And here's a cloned version of that same Windows OS running Crystal Disk Mark. All the same. Now this is on the second M.2 slot. So this one is PCI Express Gen 3x4. And we can see those speeds are exactly PCI Express Gen 3x4. Um, the randoms, uh, all right. Now let's go over here and take a look at the IOPS. I really like the IOPS we're getting on these randoms, both of them well over 100. So I think this is awesome because we're doing this inside the VM. And we're using right here this Red Hat Vert.io uh, SCSI pass-through controller. And we're still able to get pretty much about this that's about as good as i could hope for pci express gen 3x4 running on a vm so i'm very pleased with these results on the second hard drive all right here we go here's my proxmox virtual environment so yeah you can see i've got all of this stuff running and the cpu usage is almost nothing all right so i've got that windows 10 uh, virtual environment opened up and you can see there it's still using barely any of the cpu so our ram usage is about half I've, that's because i've got a lot of it allocated through all of these different things right here and you can see i've got debian over here and I was gonna install Casa OS right here just to mess around with it, but whatever. Just got Debian running right here, full on desktop installation of that. And I've got Portainer running. Here's my stacks, all my, all my, all my stuff. Containers, there we go. All kinds of things going on. So I've got my RSS running. Got my installation of fresh RSS running. So I can check out all the RSS stuff that's going on. I don't know what's, what's worth reading. So that's my RSS. A little game I'm working on right here. You know, it's all you're going to see right now until I make a book out of it. But, you know, I've got a little private wiki right here that's on my server running right there. And I can always back these up. I've got Pi Hole running. So I can come over here and make sure I'm blocking all kinds of stuff. Yes. Look at that. Blocking all kinds of stuff with Pi Hole. And then, why not? <laughs> I have Windows 95 installed. Now the mouse doesn't work all that well. It's a little bit annoying to try to get the mouse to work with the old Windows operating systems. See, all of this is running on Proxmox on this machine, and it's just using a little bit of its power. And I can use all these and install even more, and it's okay to over-provision these. You can go ahead and assign CPUs like crazy and Proxmox will intelligently route things as it, as needed and queue things up as needed. So you could provision 40 CPUs if you're crazy and you wanted to, why not? Totally fine to do that. And then uh, I've got all my hard drives installed down here. There's the new Acer Predator I'd added, and fortunately I had to install that in the um, other slot, so yeah. So that's what I'm doing with my MS-01. It has become the Proxmox machine. It just chills in there and does Proxmox things. It's got all my, VMs, my entire home server is right there. And I'm going to mess around with Casa OS pretty soon, but all that's going to be for future videos. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a really cool app store to get all kinds of Docker containers that you can install. So you can install all of these services right here, but there's more. Wait, click on this. And now we've got all kinds of app stores we can add. So just click on that one, add it. There we go. Do we have a wiki yet? Sweet. Now we've got a wiki. We got Doku wiki. 
wiki.js, all kinds of stuff. We got PyHole and Unbound all in one thing. Oh, look at that, and I'm installing it. Now this is not quite as nerdy as Portainer. It's not as easy when it comes to handling stacks, but when it comes to just quickly installing applications or Docker containers, it is the easiest by far. And if you're just doing simple stuff, then you'll probably be just fine with this. Continue in the background, how about that? All right, so this is interesting. When you install PyHole, the first time you do it, it gives you a password, but then when you click on it, you can't get to it. So one thing that's really cool about this is I've just realized that, ugh, don't do that. Go down to settings, and then right here, we have a little terminal. So right in here, we can just do sudo PyHole dash A, dash A, dash P to change the password. And that's how you set up your password for the first time. Really easy to do that. And then you have access to PyHole. Let's go down here to our settings, DNS, and look at that. It is set up our recursive DNS. That was the easiest way that I've ever set up uh, both PyHole and Unbound. So now we have a really private DNS. Anyway, there's a lot you can do with CasaOS, a lot you can do with Portainer, there's a lot you can do with this little machine. All right, here we are in the UEFI, the BIOS. And as you can see here on the, whoa, look, <laughs> no, no, no. When you first go into the management engine stuff, you'll have to put in a password. The first time you access it, the password is admin and you can Put in your new password and you can come in here and set up your network for that if you're going to use it then you can just use the management engine software on your desktop to access that quickly go through here and take a look at everything in the uafi not too awful much to to go over and i think that's where i'm gonna leave it the possibilities are endless you can do so many things with this um, i've gone far beyond what i talked about in this video on my own but it's just too much i didn't know it was overwhelmed i was like where what do i put in this video but hopefully this will give you some ideas of what you can do with this so now at the end of the video what would you do with the minis forum ms01 let me know in the comments and last but not least since you watched to the end i'm going to give you all a deal my favorite mouse down here we'll do half price on this for the next few days right here the Phoenix standard issue and this mouse i sh you know i really love the shape of the old microsoft intel mouse and this is about the closest thing i could find and then i put a flawless sensor in there so it has a lot of like a retro feel i want to say and uh with modern flawless infrared sensors so head over to epicpants.com and i'll see you in the comments